Hello and welcome to Legally Speaking with me, Tarun Nagya, on a very, very special show today. This is our Saturdays with Singhvi special on Justice Sanjay Kishan Call at Illustrious Tenure. And as you could have seen, Justice Call has a tall, imposing personality, but a very gentle heart. We could witness that from his pro-liberty attitude and the kind of bills that were given. Uh, it is very nice when you have a judge uh, that goes beyond the file to see the human, that all these files and all these cases that he is seeing are actually living people. And it's also important because the kind of teachings that it gives to juniors and other judges who see judges, you know, be it his case in Satyendra Kumar until where he actually gives a message why being pro-liberty is important. And of course, there are many other shades uh, to his personality which will also be brought forth by my guest today, who of course knows him much longer than for that. I myself have been around, but uh, thank you so much for joining me. And uh, I would also like to thank you for making an exception. You are at on a visit to Goa and I have stolen some time uh, and requested you to come and thank you so much for joining me. Uh, Tarun, it's a pleasure to, to join uh, and especially to speak about a person like Justice S.K. Call, now more easily callable as Sanjay Call. <laughs> so, uh, okay, give me a long introductory comment on Justice Sanjay Kishan Call, the person. How would you like to deal with him? What well, was you? Uh, Tarun, uh, you know, you can deal with a person like that who's had a long career in law. You can deal with him as a judge, you can analyze him as a lawyer. And of course, you can deal with it as a person, a human being. So perhaps, uh, if you like, I can start with any of those. Let's say, as a judge, his judicial life. Yes. Then we can take it from there because this is a uh, kind of a conversational uh, discussion about the various facets of Sanjay Kishan Call. You know, he spent a very long and distinguished career, and I think he epitomizes what is frequently criticized but he epitomizes the good part of that. And that is the transfer policy. A man who started off as a Delhi High Court lawyer and then a Delhi High Court judge found immense acceptability in foreign soils, foreign clients, foreign cultures, foreign people in that sense, in both Madras and Chand uh, Chandigarh. And it's not easy, let me tell you, to settle down in an ecosystem where you've not gone up, grown up as a lawyer, where you've not had the links and the friendships and it is a remarkable tribute, I think, to Justice Call that he managed to find his feet. And more importantly, he was stern and tough where that was required and yet carried people along with him. Now, that's a combination which is really, really creditable and rare. We all know, and in that sense, you know, he validates the best of the transfer policy. Today, at his farewell, at which you were there also, and I was there also, you find that there were specific counters for South Indian food and for North Indian food. And you had a large number of judges and lawyers, and I don't want to name them now, who came from across the country, right from the top, down to Madras, and of course from Delhi. I think that's uh, those are that richness or that wealth in friendships, in links, in regard, in respect, is very difficult to acquire in any other way, except that he has discharged his duties very honestly and straightforwardly. Now, going on to his role as a judge, uh, you know, I mean, there have been many, many uh, major initiatives by him in law. He's left his imprint of landmark judgment. But I found that right from his days as a judge in the High Court of Delhi, he had this particular leaning in favor of free speech. He would always... Uh, uh, look and see that free speech is never unnecessarily or unjustly compromised. I'll only mention three of his judgments, but there are many more. But the three which stand out, and that in particular stand out as a young judge then. He was a junior judge there. Uh, one, of course, the first was Kushwan Singh. And Manika Gandhi had a rollicking battle with Kushwan Singh about defamation. And ultimately, Justice uh, Call went into all details and upheld the right to free speech, saying this is within the bounds of free speech. There was an even more famous case where uh, Hussein, 
was pulled up for obscenity. And Justice Call came down heavily in favor of artistic freedom. And these are all in the High Court, relatively junior judge. And of course, when he went to uh, Madras, he found an opportunity again in a Murugan, so called Murugan case where he again spoke in favor of artistic freedom. So that is one facet of the analysis of the judge, standing up for free speech, the diverse facets of 191A, and uh, not allowing to be compromised on you know, small excuses or small thresholds. The second feature about him is he has tried to hold, and these are all unusual features, mind you. They're not normal. He has tried to hold the sc scales even, Tarun, between the government as a litigant and a non-government or a private person as a litigant. Uh, in fact, at his uh, informal remarks on the bench of the last day, when I was also in the court, he said that, look, you cannot weigh uh, justice in terms of stakes. Because a stake in a case is 400 crores. You can't lead in favor of the government. You have to hold the scales even and not be making the scales uneven because of stakes being high. And he has exercised that discipline repeatedly. He has, for example, been very clear in awarding large costs when the government walks in with a delay of 500 days, 400 days, 600 days, as happens commonly. Just because, you know, you plead the usual excuse, we are government, we had this officer sleeping and we had this, that, or the other. He says, that's no, that's, and these are exact words. That's no reason to allow a government to walk in when they choose. The third facet is that he's always been a stickler for judicial discipline. Uh, for discipline in terms of uh, discharge of uh, uh, his duties as judge also. For example, he has held clearly that delay in delivery of judgments, these are all his reported judgments, delay in delivery of judgments by high courts is absolutely unacceptable. He has uh, been very strict about it in his judgments. He has sent out a full guideline. Of course, they continue to happen. But uh, in spite of this just called approach, not because of that. He has also uh, been a case management person right from the beginning when I've seen him. His board is always, this I mentioned on the last day when I was in court when he was rising uh, in, on the bench with the Chief Justice. Uh, and I happened to speak along with a few others in the first row. And I said, all along, he has given dates after careful consideration. He has made that date count. It's, it's not what we call a farzi date or a fictitious date. He's made that date count. He can give a longer date, but it's better to give a longer date when he actually tries to take up and dispose. It's not always possible, but he has tried his best to do that. And uh, he has therefore managed cases in terms of time, in terms of written submissions, in terms of some gentle degree of guillotine, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and in fact, uh, has uh, uh, been absolutely wonderful. I think he's been the last word in the other aspect of delay, which is non-appointments. Till his last week in the Supreme Court, he has pushed the government, he has scheduled them, he has threatened them, he has pushed them, he has nudged them, he has pressurized them to fill up vacancies. In it's fact, not easy. It's I not would easy like to hold them. you here for one second before you move ahead. Indeed, it's so nice to have a judge who has a heart who understands that uh, even uh, the lawyers uh, who are up for judgeship they have careers at stake. They cannot indefinitely wait for that elevation. For two, two years after the names are in circulation, I have been recommended to be elevated. So, so, so I don't have time for more examples, but I'll just give you three quick ones. Of course, the most important is how he made sure that to the extent possible, and I would still say that the central government is usually at fault for not doing walking a full mile. But to the extent possible, as far as Justice Call is concerned, he walked more than the mile. And he filled up a large number of vacancies. And he did it very artfully and well. But he's also given judicial orders, judgments about, for example, not filling up vacancies in the consumer forum. He's talked about how this is the one place which touches the man directly at the grassroots level. And if you don't fill up vacancies there, you are actually denying him justice for a specialized forum set up for informal expeditious display, uh, disposal. Uh, I was very proud, of course, to find that he mentioned one of my articles in his judgments about ad hoc judges. I've been speaking about case management and uh, uh, administration of justice reforms for the last 15 odd years. Mostly people don't listen. He picked up this ad hoc judge appointment issue, which I'd written about, and he has strongly advocated in one of his judicial orders, judgments, Lok Nirman or some such judgment is called. So these are various facets. And he also a stickler for discipline in civil now, life. 
He is also a stickler for discipline in civic life. I mean, in the Shaheen Bagh citizenship case protests, it was very clear that yes, peaceful protests must be done, but it doesn't mean that you can occupy a part of the road indefinitely and permanently. And he said that, look, we'll try and balance both, but I'm going to be very clear about this. He's a very pragmatic judge. So I'm giving you these five, six facets illustrated by his various judgments. His pragmatism is shown in matrimonial matters. Two or three judgments recently, 2023 and 2022, where he has invoked the power under 141 and 142, especially 142 of the Constitution, which allows the Supreme Court to extraordinarily act, where it found in these cases that there was genuine irretrievable breakdown of marriage. He said that, look, uh, marriage is not supposed to be a compulsory uh, matter. If it breaks down, there is no point uh, dragging it like a festering wound. So these are the various facets. And of course, he's been there right up front as two classmates with Chief Justice Chandrachur in both the same sex uh, constitution bench where I had the privilege of opening and uh, the uh, 370 judgment recently and also the privacy judgment earlier, uh, both of which had both of these persons authoring judgment. So this is a quick slice, but it gives you a the various issues which he has been steadfast on discipline, delay, administration of justice, pragmatism, uh, 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 the manner of, uh, you know, uh, free speech, etc. It also tells you the diversity and the versatility of the issues he's handled. And it also tells you that he has done that with a great degree of consistency across three or four, uh, three high courts and one Supreme Court. Well, uh, now you've uh, shared uh, uh, the anecdotes, judgments, and other things uh, on Justice Sanjay Kishan Call as the judge. Uh, can we delve into some aspects of Justice Call as a lawyer? How was he like? You would have seen him at the bar. Well, I have had the privilege of being his classmate in uh, college and have been at the bar <laughs> and, uh, and seeing him as a judge. So, you know, I, I don't speak about these things and keep a distance when on the bench, but now it can be mentioned. Uh, I've seen him, of course, as a professional, as a very competent, able professional. Uh, we appeared frequently uh, in the high court, uh, you know, in various matters, either opposing or on the same side. But otherwise, I've seen him as a judge. He, of course, focused on the Delhi high court more than any other place. Uh, there again, I think two or three points need underlining. One is, of course, he had a large practice, but a large practice spread across the spectrum. Commercial matters, non-commercial matters. So that gives a to-be judge in future a very strong anchor, a very strong bedrock. You, you, Of course, it's not necessary that you are a very large practice lawyer to be a successful judge, not at all. And there have been examples of some very competent lawyers making very ordinary judges. But it helps a lot if it is a combination, as it worked in Justice Call's case, that he had a successful practice across subjects which were diverse. He had the respect of the bar. And therefore, when he went to the bench in the Delhi High Court, he continued to command that uh, respect and regard, which helps a lot in your early years as judge. Okay. Um... Uh, can you tell me uh, uh, one thing about his person? I mean, if you can tell me one or two of judges, just a Sanjay Kishan called the person, how he was, a, he is as a human being and how you have seen him grow over the years at the bar and otherwise. As I said, uh, I have seen him and known him both as a student, then as a lawyer, then as a judge, and then of course as a judge in the apex court. Um, uh, I think the most interesting and impressive part is Sanjay Kaul as a person, as a human being. Firstly, he is, what he is outside, he is inside. You see what you see and you get what you get. There is hardly any vestige of double standards and hypocrisy. And that is, I think, very refreshing. Once he trusts you and knows you, there is also no degree of pomposity which has been a problem with all judicial systems, including our own. I think uh, he's by nature an open person, a gregarious person, and a very generous person. This combination of gregariousness and uh, generosity can be misused by people, can be misunderstood. But 
Justice Call has not allowed that to compromise his essential nature, as he should not. Uh, his house, for example, for college reunions or for gatherings of that kind or of the, you know, some of the old associations is open. He has been very warm and welcoming in those situations without in any manner, not by an inch or a millimeter, compromising his judicial integrity without in any manner diluting that judicial integrity. And that, I think, is a very important thing to learn. I think to be able to be generous, gregarious, warm and open and welcoming, and a very great uh, hospitable person, and yet not to let your judicial integrity be diluted or compromised in the slightest manner is a great achievement. Uh, he, of course, has his weaknesses, food being one of them. And uh, I have joked with him that he has shown Herculean discipline in the last few years to manage a diet plan, which has visibly shown us the changes. But like a true Kashmiri, true to his roots, he loves good food. And in the old days prior to his very um, strict diet plan, he has indulged in that. I think all in all... Sanjay Krishan Kaul as a judge, as a lawyer, and as a person has been a great combination, a, a very uh, exceptional combination. And I can... Yes. And I, and I will, of course, say... And I will, of course, say that we will, because of the great qualities of head and heart, because of this unique combination, we'll miss him sorely. Although we'll be happy to see more of him as a friend uh, of, of many years. Uh, one wish uh, that you would like to give him, given that he starts his third career in the field of arbitration, the first being a lawyer, the second being the judge, and third now as an arbitrator. Uh, I've always believed that one must always be busy, be hardworking till the very end. So I will not advise him to be in that sense retiring, but I can tell you, and he gave a hint of that when he spoke on that last informal day from the bench, uh, I think there'll be many parts to his life and arbitration should be and is likely to be a very small part of it. Okay. And I say that because he's a person of this, he's a person of uh, diversity and versatility. And I genuinely wish that, of course, he remains busy in arbitration, which I have no doubt he will, but that he will not succumb to the allurements of arbitration alone, and he will do what he enjoys and what he wants to and what he should be doing in a greater measure, including spending time with his grandchildren, including traveling to exotic spots, and including just relaxing and doing nothing dedicated to the art of idleness. Thank you. Thank you so much for reflecting on old times, commenting on Justice Call as a judge, as a person, and as a lawyer. This is indeed a treasured show and one of the very good ones that we have recorded on Saturdays with Singh V. And thank you. You joined us from Goa, where you're currently visiting. Appreciate your time. Thank you so much. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.